Francis Benamo. Yair Bendor. You're watching, watching B-Way Show. Hi, everyone. Shoshana here with the stars of A Prayer for the French Republic. How are you feeling today on a two-show day? Good. A little tired, but I'm already tired, so we'll see. <laughs> Excited to do it. Two-show days are draining, but they're worth it. It's fun. We have a fun lunch in between. So I saw this at a, a Shabbat matinee, which was, I would say, the best time to see it. Do you have any, like, are there any rituals or something that happens, especially maybe on a Friday night lighting the candles? Well, actually, every night, um, Rich Topol, who plays uh, our uncle, comes into our dressing room and says, Shabbat Shalom! <laughs> and he's like, it's a Shabbat, uh, it's a Shabbat show, you know, so it's extra special. And he always says that every Friday night. Yeah, that is so special. Yeah. It's, it's funny. There's a lot of, yeah, like little ritual. It's funny. I've never looked at it as a ritual, but like there are things that we tend to say to each other right before somebody leaves for the stage, whether it be, you know, have a good show or you go take a bath or just like little things that have to do with the show. And it's funny because I never really thought about it, but we do it pretty ritualistically. Um, Not only on Shabbat. Not only on Shabbat, yeah, but we, you know, we, it's kind of funny to say, but we, we sing to each other. We do all kinds of stupid shit, but it's fun. I love that. I think that's what's so nice, especially having such an intense play to have these moments of bonding. Oh, totally. We're, we're definitely a big family. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, I think we're very close with each other. I think more so than like other um, ensembles, just because of, you know, we, we, we play a family, and so we've gotten really comfortable with each other, but also like this generational thing where instead of feeling like we're two different casts too, because you've got your 1940s family and your 2016, like I think we made it a point to just really feel like we're one big family all living in the same time. Like it's, it's fun. It's fun to be close like that. Yeah, five generations in France. How would you describe the show to your friends? Oh my goodness. Oh boy. Well, that's a, of course, it's the mic's on me. Uh, you, <laughs> do you want to? How would I describe it to my friends? Um, gosh, it's a show about so many things. Uh, about, uh, you know, family and humanity and immigration and religious identity and, and love. Yes, and, 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 and even politics. Like there's so, it's so loaded and that somehow maintains like comedy and, uh, and, and it's fun and there's music in it. It's just, ah. Uh, it's just a, this sort of like this perfect amalgamation of everything you want to see in theater. That's how I would describe it. Ooh, I love that. Yes, there's a piano which plays an integral part of it. Your character also has a nice guitar moment ideas and throughout through line. Yes, we never actually see him play it, unfortunately. Right. I did but. practice the song that I would possibly have had to uh, play, but I uh, it didn't didn't get there. So I just sing. The idea of it. Yeah, yeah, the idea. Yes, the yeah, idea yeah. of it. The guitar is there in spirit. In spirit, yes. So, you know, the two of you play siblings. How? What's your relationship like? Oh, yeah. Um, well, actually, I think it's pretty similar to, well, I'm a little nicer to you than Elodie is. Maybe a little nicer? A little, I, love I mean, it. I definitely give him a hard time. But I'm a big sister, and I am older than him, and uh, so that comes really natural to me. So I like... I like, you know, busting your chops yeah, often. No, it, it, it felt natural from day one, <laughs> really. And also- she was, she was a bitch from day one, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. But that also, I think casting did a good job. Like we could be siblings. Like when you look at our stage family with like Jeffrey being our dad and, and, and Betsy, our, like it kind of works in this yeah. purpose. So, I don't look at you and it feels like a stretch. No. Like it feels totally natural. You look like yeah. any one of my cousins yeah. too. So I automatically feel like we're related. Right. And we do have that like sibling thing though, where I, yeah. I do make fun of him yeah, all the time. Yeah, and we hang out a lot. Yes. And we talk about our parents <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, yeah. I, like our parents in the play, yeah. because, that we, we do. They're like, they've become like their own little like world of yeah. family, which, you know, is really funny to watch. Mm -hmm. It's great. So. So I think anyone who's Jewish, but also everyone, right? This is not just a Jewish story, but I am gonna focus on this for just 
a moment and then we will expand. As a, a Jewish person living in America with heritage in Brazil, uh, Egypt, France, Italy, like hearing these stories of European Jews, Israeli Jews, and just like, I felt like it really expanded my understanding of being Jewish here. And also it felt like, oh, these are the type of conversations that I have with my family. And it was nice seeing that represented on a stage in such a thoughtful way and throughout the whole time because there are two intermissions my friend and I were like wow this feels so real it's nice to have a story that is so well written oh yeah I mean Josh Harmon is a genius I'm convinced and um, it, I mean from the moment I read the script I was like this is just brilliant um, and so and also just like unpretentious and really easy to understand just like so um, simple and yet um, beautiful and poetic but um, what was I going to say about... Oh, yeah, I'm actually a Uruguayan Jew, so I was born in Uruguay. And so speaking to my parents after the show, we actually went to Milo's next door, and they brought friends, and it was such an amazing conversation about just what it felt like growing up in Uruguay as a Jew, you know? And they, it was like the first time I was actually having that conversation with my parents, which is so bizarre being that, you know, they've been my parents forever, and I've, I've never brought it up. Um, so this play has brought up so many things in that sense of, like, looking into my family and into my heritage and, like, really understanding, like, where they they came from because they've come from so many places that sometimes we don't focus on that and this really uh, helped us bring it to light in a beautiful way. I, I think that you don't have to necessarily be from an immigrant Jewish family in order to understand what's happening in the story and every single one of our castmates and probably most of the audience too can find themselves in our story. Um, but also the, the, the conversation that this uh, play sort of uh, starts is an ongoing conversation. The Jewish story is an ongoing story. And so it's funny, you said something about having the, the two intermissions and all of a sudden I thought like, oh, what an interesting way that this play is constructed that it gives you 10 minutes in between acts to discuss what you've just seen. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, and then sort of like rack your brain around everything you've seen, get your, make whatever conclusions you're making and then sit down and go into another act with those, you know, thoughts. Um, yeah, again, it's just, it's, it's, it's just a fun way to do theater. Um, but every conversation that I've had with an audience member after the show too, and uh, during talkbacks and stuff, it's, it's uh, surprising to see how people's initial reaction is to go, this is why this touched me. This is how I relate to it. And, it, and everybody relates. Everyone relates. Um, did I answer the question? I felt like I answered the question. Do you have any specific fan interactions that really stuck out to you? Fan oh, or wow. I've, had, I've had people try to attack me on the street. Oh, no. <laughs> I wasn't a fan. I mean, That's you know, very scary. Up, yeah, I mean, no, she wasn't like, she was just very aggressive. She had a very aggressive point of view. And she really uh, felt that my character was me, that I was like the Elodie. So like she was talking to me as though I was that person and trying to counter, like, have a counter argument with me about like the monologue I have. So that was pretty. But that's a good bizarre. point, right? Is like at the same time where people relate to our story. I mean, you're talking about Israel yes, and, and, policy. and policy, also in like US policy and stuff like that, that comes up during play. Not everyone's gonna be on the same side of that. And so some people are more aggressive and adamant about letting you know that they're not on, on your side. Uh, but also things that are also said during talkbacks and stuff like, you know, people often ask me whether, you know, because I'm Israeli American, like, where do I prefer living or where do I feel more safe? And depending on what answer I get, people have reactions to that, whether it's during the talkback or after all on the street. You know, somebody asked me that question and I answered however I answered. And then when I came out later and people were still hanging out outside, you know, some woman came up to me and said, you know, Israel is the safest place in the world. And I just had to go, okay. Yeah.
what I found so important is that you the, this play really gives multiple sides. I wouldn't even say both sides because there, there aren't two sides. There's so many sides to every story, let alone the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and everything happening in the world right now. And this really opens up a dialogue that doesn't say like, you're right, you're wrong. It says there are aspects of everything that I think we could learn a little bit from each other. Absolutely, it's all on a spectrum. It's not black yeah. or white, so yeah. Yeah, it's a it's it's fun to watch a show and be able to go talk about it after and have a drink and discuss it. It's it's one of those shows for sure. Um, oh, I'm gonna pause for a truck. Pause for a truck. <laughs> da 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 da. It might be a while. Oh no, he has a stop <laughs> sign. He's good. Good. Um, what's fun and cool about the characters of this show is that everyone's smart. And yeah, you. I'm, I'm, You're yeah, yeah, no, I'm, you know, I'm getting there. But that was my, that's the, the, <laughs> the, the, the second point is that uh, everybody learns from each other in the play, in the context of the play. When, when one character speaks to another character, it, it's never just casual conversation. It's always about sort of getting more information, learning something you didn't know. You leave every scene knowing uh, uh, just a tidbit of information you didn't about any one of the conflicts or topics about the, you know, it, that I this mean, play touches upon. It's about a family. You know, Nancy, who plays, Nancy Robinette, who plays um, Irma, our great, great grandmother, she always says, um, this isn't a dysfunctional family. This is a functional family. Yeah. Everybody is talking about how they feel. Yeah. And that's really beautiful. Yeah. My friend who is French Jewish saw this play and she was the one that was like, show, you need to see this and we need to talk about it afterwards. And I was like, yes, please. And she said, this is exactly how my family is. Every word is accurate and she's coming again this week. Oh, right. yes, yes. There are people who come multiple times so it's, it's so nice to hear. People have said a lot of good things about the family dynamic. Um, on stage and uh, ju not just the way that we talk to each other, but the way that we really sort of handle each other. The little bickerings, the arguments, the hand on somebody's shoulder, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the, the looks that we share sometimes when our parents are arguing, you know, it's just, uh, the, the family dynamic is very relatable. And Cromer, Cromer has a lot to do with that. He, oh, yeah. he was like so, you know, those were the details that he focused on, which is why he's so brilliant and exciting and yeah. So you have um, uh, this monologue. You uh, you have a few very passionate conversations where it's like, well, hold on, I have one more point. And <laughs> relatable, this is very common in our culture to to be like, but let me just get this one other thought. What's going through your head as you're giving these speeches and, and these conversations, really? Um, I mean, it's just about being in the moment, being clear about what I'm trying to say, trying to be heard by someone who may not have, you know, the knowledge or, you know, she... I, I feel that I have to educate her. So basically, I'm educating someone on something she might not know. And just being, trying to be as clear as possible so I get my point through. And that's that's pretty much all I'm thinking about. And also just this play also, we were talking about learning and growing throughout. And I think there's some value in, we are not experts in everything or in a lot of things. And there's such a value of saying, I don't know this, I'd love to hear your opinion. Absolutely. Yeah, and I feel like all the characters are somewhat, I mean, Elodie tends to sound like she's not doing that, but she is, and she, you know, even within the monologue, like if you listen closely, you know, she says she, you know, it, she doesn't have the answers, you know, and that um, she doesn't know, you know, what, you know, I don't think Israel's perfect, you know, I, what's perfect, you know, um, yeah, things aren't so clear, but like, it's about, you know, digging and finding and searching. Good question. I'm, I'm sort of racking my brain about how to answer this. Um, I, I don't know how to answer that. It's well, it's like how you sort of are open to like learning, and I think that Daniel has ideals that are not fully formed, um, but he's very opinionated 
about the things that he knows at that. God damn, this is complicated. He's young. He's, he's young yeah, he's and young. he's trying to figure it all out. And he's trying to, you know, put on his big boy pants. And he's sometimes, and it's, <laughs> this uh, is from Elodie's perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah and, and then like Daniel has a lot of like things that are imposed upon him and ideas, uh, other people's ideas imposed upon him. And he mostly just kind of takes it until he can't anymore. And then it's like just throwing another iron into the fire and just the whole thing just like explodes into argument and stuff. But every, but there is an openness that he has. And I think we all do to really, even when arguments get heated in this family, everybody in, in a very sort of like aggressive manner goes, okay, I hear you. I understand what you're saying. I just don't want to do it or I just want to deal with it right now, but we're still very, like, listening to each other, responsive, li uh, 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 learning and taking other people's feelings and ideas into consideration throughout the whole thing, which is exactly what makes us functional. Okay, yeah. Now for a moment of levity, can we talk about French croissants? Yes. <laughs> they, when I went to France a few years ago and I had my first freshly baked from the corner, shot, like yeah. down the street, I was like, this is actually the best thing I've ever had. <laughs> They're just flaky and buttery and warm and they just fall apart. There's nothing better than that. Yeah. One of my favorite moments in the show is when Molly has that bite of the croissant and just goes, oh my God. Like, I'm, I know, and to us it's like so normal. Like, what is up with this girl? Like, where has she been? Yeah. She's living of in Of course it's that good. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but it says a lot about, uh, you know, uh, so David, uh, our, our amazing director, well, said this uh, several times. He said I, he went to Paris only for like 36 hours and it was still the best thing he's ever seen, ever. It's just <laughs> like, I think you go to a place that is so beautiful everywhere and the culture is beautiful and the language is beautiful and the food is amazing and it's just, uh, it's like, it's gotta be the best thing in the world and I think the croissant just kind of represents it perfectly because who doesn't like croissants? And if you go to the source, it's gonna be the best thing you've ever had. Uh. So luckily you have a lot more time to see this amazing play. It was just extended until March 27th. Is there anything you came into today wanting to share with fans? Come see the show. You, you're not going to regret it. It's really good. We've got fan right here. <laughs> uh, I would like to say thank you to everyone who has come so far. Because of you, we got extended. And to everyone who has not come to see this, Come see this before it ends. This show definitely has a future, but this run has to close on the 27th. Don't miss it. And if you're worried about a three hour play, this does not feel like a three hour play. I don't know how you do it. I am engaged the entire time. I am like, this was three hours. Truly, it's remarkable. The pacing, the storytelling, it is beautiful. I absolutely loved it. Uh, saw it with my friend, speaking about it with other friends throughout the week. It has been really amazing. Where can people find you on social media? Um, I'm on Instagram, Francis Benamu. It's easy to remember my last name because it's the name of the family in the play, so. <laughs> I'm at Yair Bendor on uh, Instagram and Twitter. And you can find me at B-Way Show. That's B-W-A-Y-S-H-O. Thank you so much for chatting today. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. We'll see you at the show.